Are you trying to start your plant-based journey and have no clue where to get started? In this video, I'm going to show you how I assisted a very sweet couple with their first experience on a whole food plant-based grocery haul. So, um, Miss Ayana is coming with us. Daddy had to work today. So, this should be interesting. <laughs> so the main strategy I like to teach my clients is to incorporate each of the six plant-based food groups. So these include things like whole grains, legumes, fruits, veggies, nuts and seeds, and different herbs and spices. Each meal that you plan should contain as many of these different food groups as you possibly can. What I find to be most helpful is to structure everything around the starches. So like the beans, the potatoes, the rice, the quinoa, things of that nature. So if you used to eat like a typical American style diet of like hamburgers and steaks and you know, meat and potato kind of thing, then it should be no problem transitioning out those animal products and transitioning in more beans, lentils, whole grains, and potatoes. And from there, you just pile in the veggies and everything else comes easy. Okay, when you first step into the grocery store, where you wanna begin is produce. About 80 to 90% of your groceries are going to be from this section. So it'll take practice and trial and error to determine what portions you're going to be needing of each of these because obviously they go bad quite quickly. So don't go too big your first time. Find out where you're lacking after the first few days and make sure you make note of it and pick up more at your next trip. I usually go to the grocery store two to three times a week anyway, so you really can't go wrong if you end up getting too much of something because you can always throw leftovers into like a soup stock and you can throw leftover fruits into smoothies or freeze them for smoothies later on. A great suggestion in the produce section is to eat the rainbow. So what this means is that you're going to want to grab as many different hues and colors as you can. So like eggplant and red cabbage for the purples and then your bell peppers for those oranges and carrots and sweet potatoes and, and cantaloupe. And then you've got plenty of greens to choose from, from broccoli and green leafy vegetables and celery. Just make sure your cart is very colorful and you can't go wrong. You know you're getting a ton of variety in your nutrient profile if you see all these different colors. And the brighter or more vibrant the hue means the higher the antioxidant component. So you can't go wrong with the red cabbage as opposed to the green cabbage and the red grapes as opposed to the green grapes, things of that nature. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that you are going to vary these from week to week to week. So every time you go to the grocery store to restock, you want to grab the same items, but a different variation of that item. So instead of grabbing bok choy this week because you had it last week, you're going to grab spinach this week or kale or collards, some other type of green. Or if you had sweet potatoes last week, you might want to try some kind of red potato or Yukon gold or even the more exotic blue potato that I love. Or is it purple? Some people call it purple, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Before you go grocery shopping, and you'll start to pick up on these over time, but there's something called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen that the government puts out every season, I believe, that tells you which of the produce items have the highest residue of herbicides and pesticides. So definitely your organic products are going to be your go-to, but I know those are expensive, especially if they're not in season. So not everybody can afford them and not everybody has access to them. It's getting better, but there's still a lot lacking in that area. So you're gonna to wanna to check out this list ahead of time to know which items are going to be more beneficial to you if bought organic and which items you might really not need organic at all, depending upon the residue constituents. All of the produce items are initially tested and determined what level of safety, you know, is involved with consuming them conventionally grown as opposed to organically grown. So it's a nice little indicator of how much money you're going to need to spend each week. And hopefully that doesn't dictate your preferences, but sometimes it kind of has to, at least until things go back into season. I'll put a link to that website below if you're interested. Another tip I have for this section is to not get too comfortable with one path. You're gonna to wanna to go up and down each aisle regardless if you think there's anything that you need in that aisle because this will open up your horizons to try different things and incorporate different foods into your meals each week. 
So I know this can be a bit of a headache, but set some time aside for your grocery shopping. I even have my clients put it in their planner sometimes if they feel that they just don't have time to eat healthy. We sit down and we find spaces each week to throw in that hour, hour and a half of grocery shopping and then the follow up with the meal prepping. So just a little tool you can keep in your toolbox if you're finding it that you are consistently not making it to the grocery store each week because you feel that you literally don't have time. We all have time to take care of ourselves. It's just a matter of prioritizing. So the next area of the grocery store that you're gonna to wanna to focus on are the dried and canned goods. So these tend to be more in the center of the grocery store. It's probably the only foods you're gonna grab in the middle aisles of the grocery store because that's where you find most of your processed and convenience items. So things like dried beans and lentils, whole grains like rice, quinoa, amaranth, buckwheat, rye, barley. This is also where you'll find your nuts and seeds, preferably without salt, sugar, or oil, or being exposed to heat of any kind. I don't tend to recommend a lot of canned goods, but canned tomatoes and pastes tend to be a great go-to when it comes to plant-based soups and uh, like spaghetti sauces. In this area, you're likely gonna find your condiments, so like your vinegar, your mustard, your hummus, your salsa. Try to find these with as little salt, sugar, and oil as possible, if at all, really. And if all else fails, make your own. It's so much easier than you think, and there are a ton of plant-based recipes online these days. This is also where you're gonna find your herbs and spices. So I literally feel like you cannot grab enough of these. And the more that you incorporate into your meals, the more antioxidants and phytochemicals that you're achieving. So the more the better. It did take me many years to develop my taste preferences for what flavors go with what, but over time, it's so worth it. It's just like learning to cook with anything. It takes time and it takes trial and error, but eventually you'll get there. Herbs and spices are a must when it comes to this diet because it keeps things fresh and new and it makes you feel like you have a constant variety. So the last section of the grocery store that I highly recommend you diving into and getting really acquainted with if you're going to be transitioning to this diet is the frozen, blah, the frozen and refrigerated section. This is where you'll find all your frozen fruits and veggies. So these actually tend to be more nutritious than the fresh produce because what happens is the farmer will harvest the plant and then freeze it right away as opposed to throwing it on a truck and letting it be distributed mile after mile after mile after mile, day after day sometimes, getting to a grocery store where it might sit several more days before you actually purchase the item, take it home and eat it. So having frozen, chopped, ready to go fruits and veggies is going to be your best friend because there are very few conveniences in this lifestyle because you make so much from scratch because you can't trust any of the pre-prepared products that other vendors have already made for you because they're full of preservatives and texturizers and artificial colorings and flavors and all sorts of nasty chemicals that you don't want in your body. Our freezer is always stocked with a ton of mixed berries. I just put a bowl of them on the counter every morning and by mid-morning I have delicious berries thawed and ready to go. And you really grow accustomed to that cold frozen flavor as opposed to the fresh ones. And sometimes I even prefer them. The chopped up frozen veggies are a must for things like soups and stir fries and pretty much any dish you're going to be making on a whole food plant-based diet that's heated because you're going to need to incorporate vegetables in each and every meal. Or at least I highly recommend that if you're going to really succeed and get the major health benefits out of this diet, that's the way to go. You're gonna find just a couple of things in the refrigerated section. So this is going to be your soy products. If you're going to consume any soy milk, your tempeh, your tofu, these are slightly more processed than I am comfortable with consuming myself. But for children, these are so helpful in making sure they get the right nutrition. These are gonna be packed with protein and different vitamins and minerals, especially the fortified versions. But these are slightly more fatty foods because they are more processed, but soybeans just tend to have a higher fat content in general compared to the other legumes. So these are great transition foods. They're really helpful for meat replacements when you're first transitioning to this diet. I put some kind of soy milk or tofu in all of my daughter's smoothies. It's so easy to just get some extra nutrition in there by blending up some 
silkened or firm tofu of any kind or soy milk, whatever your preference. Soy milk tends to have slightly less nutrition than the other processed soy varieties because it's less concentrated, but soy milk also tends to have more additives. So you'll actually find things like salt and sometimes oil in soy milk. So be really careful and you wanna make sure you get the unsweetened varieties. But soy milk is gonna be your go-to because like oat milk or almond milk or coconut milk, those are all fine, but they are much less nutritious than your legume-based varieties. So Bill and Vicky's first grocery haul was a bit pricey, but this is due to the fact that they were basically starting from scratch. We were able to do a complete pantry makeover and get rid of all of the processed items, especially those containing things like salt, sugar, and oil, the flowers, all of the items that were gonna be detrimental to their health in some way or perpetuate their cravings or cause other ongoing issues that they were trying to get rid of in the first place by initiating this diet. So imagine that you threw out everything in your kitchen, everything in your fridge, your freezer, your pantry, and you had to restock. So that is why this grocery trip was, I believe, well over $300. <laughs> But after you have everything stocked and ready to go, you really just need to restock from time to time. There's no need to keep spending that amount of money each time. Now that we're back at the house, I can show you guys our bounty. This is literally a plant-based starter kit. So this is what we're working with. <laughs> and this isn't what you would need for the week. This is what you would need for the first probably couple weeks. But you're always gonna have to stock up on like your greens and your veggies and your fresh fruits. But for today, I wanna make sure she had her canned beans, her regular beans, her reds, her whites, and then she's got her lentils, different varieties of those, as well as some fresh ginger. That's what this giant thing is. And different seasonings. Um, we got some salt-free mixes as well as some stone ground mustard for um, some stir fries and different flavorings. Some turmeric, uh, as well as curry powder and some pumpkin puree for smoothies, organic soy milk for smoothies, garlic powder, onion powder. For the soup, she got some no salt added crushed tomatoes as well as a giant bag of berries for oatmeal and smoothies, and another frozen mix for some tropical smoothies. I'm moving on to all of the mixed veggies. It's always good to have different varieties on hand. These are awesome because they're already cut up and ready to go. There's absolutely nothing you need to do um, to prepare them ahead of time. So we have some edamame, some baby lima beans, and different types of tea for some beverage choices. And then we have our dried mushrooms and some turmeric for the soup that we'll be making today, her salad. Um, she's got all these different kinds of greens, some baby kale, a spring mix, as well as some baby bok choy. And then she's got her romaine and some arugula over there and some more kale, I think. On her salad, she'll have these vinegars. Um, she's got apple cider vinegar and some organic balsamic. Then we have the tomatoes, the celery, and some other uh, varied veggies for snacking as well as for her salad. And then you always want a variety of fruits. Here's some plums, some grapes, as well as grapefruit, and she always keeps a ton of fruit on hand, so we didn't have to grab too much of that today. I wanted her to have some condiments for um, some variety. We have some black bean dip and some um, original hummus. Now these are special. These are literally the only ones in the grocery store with no junk. So there's a little bit of salt, but there's no oil. There's no tahini, and there's nothing wrong with tahini, but when you're trying to lose weight, you really wanna keep those added fats out of your diet. Um, the salsa is also great because it does not have a ton of uh, salt in it. It's just got a little bit. All right, so moving on. She has her tomatoes and zucchini and some cabbage as well as watercress and her sprouts. Where are the sprouts? Right here. 
for her salad. And we have a bunch of sweet potatoes. You always wanna have potatoes on hand. And she got some red pears for snacking, some broccoli for snacking. We picked up some teff. This is an Ethiopian grain. It's a whole grain. It's very, very nutritious, as well as sorghum. These are awesome for your gut bugs. Um, they're only slightly digestible, so they actually pass through your system and only some of the calories get absorbed. So awesome for weight loss. We have a, um, a kabocha squash and a couple of acorn squashes. Again, these are great to have on hand just as some nice starches to fill you up and keep you satiated. And then lastly, we have nutritional yeast. This stuff is a must for any vegan. It's got that weird cheesy flavor that everybody's after when they're transitioning to this diet. So let's get started. What'd you find? Do you have a noodle? <laughs> So that's my typical grocery strategy. That's what I teach my clients. I hope you guys found this valuable. If you're still finding yourself with a lot of questions, make sure you leave them in the comments section below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I see them. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video.